Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is the difference quotient? And we'll be going over a couple of examples of finding the difference quotient. All right, let's get right into the lesson. Here we have a Cartesian plane and a sketch of just an arbitrary continuous function that we'll call f. And we've labeled two arbitrary points on f. The first point gets a generic input value of x, so its output value is f of x. Then we're saying let's travel some arbitrary number of units h in the positive direction, and then let's label that point. Since we traveled h units in the positive direction from our blue point over here, this x-coordinate is going to be x plus h. Thus, the output value, or the y-coordinate, is f of x plus h. And again, this is just a way to label two arbitrary points on our continuous function. Then we ask this question, what is the average rate of change between the two points? Think back to slopes. The slope of a line is a rate of change, and it can be measured as rise over run. The rise is the change in the function's value, which we can see in our diagram right here. The run is the change in the input value, which we see in our diagram here. When we divide a function's change by the number of units it took to reach that change, we get the function's average rate of change per unit over that distance. So we're going to use this same computation to answer our question. We're going to divide the change in the function's value by the number of units it took to reach that change. That will give us the average rate of change from this point to this point, which is also the slope of what's called the secant line that goes through these two points. So let's do it. First, we need the function's change. That goes in our numerator. Our function started here at f of x and ended here at f of x plus h. We put the ending value first, f of x plus h minus f of x. So this is the change in the function's value from here to here. Then remember, we divide by the number of units it took to reach that change. We started at x and then we ended at x plus h. So the total number of units it took for this change to occur is x plus h, the ending value, minus x, which is just equal to h. All right, so why did we go through all of that? Well, because this, my friends, is the difference quotient. So now you know where it comes from. This expression, the difference quotient, tells us the average rate of change of a function from a point x to a point x plus h. So let's take a closer look at the difference quotient by going over some examples. So here we've got a graph of a function in red. This function happens to be negative 3x plus 4. Now let's find the difference quotient of this function. And remember, the difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So let's go ahead and do this example. For starters, let's just work with the numerator, because we know we'll have to divide by h at the end. Let's just save that for the end. First, we have f of x plus h. f of x plus h is just this function evaluated at x plus h. So where there is an x, we'll put x plus h. So erasing this, that means we're going to have negative 3 multiplied by x plus h plus 4. This is our f of x plus h. Then, remember, we have to subtract f of x. f of x is just this function evaluated at x, so we'll subtract negative 3x plus 4. This is f of x plus h, and this is f of x. And remember, at the end, we're going to divide this all by h, but I'm not going to write that now because it just makes things look messier than necessary. Let's simplify this expression before we divide by h. For starters, we'll distribute the negative 3. That gives us negative 3x minus 3h and then plus 4. So that is all of this stuff here. Now let's distribute the negative. We have negative, negative 3x, so that's going to be positive 3x, and then we have negative, positive 4, that will be minus 4. And let me just shift this over a little bit and write an equal sign so we know what we're doing. This is equal to this. 
Now we've got some cancellation we can do. We have a negative 3x and a positive 3x, so those will cancel out. We also have a plus 4 and a minus 4, so those will cancel out too, and we are left with negative 3h. But this is not the difference quotient. Remember, we need to divide by h. So for the difference quotient, we divide that numerator by h. Here, the h's cancel out. That just leaves us with negative 3. And this is our difference quotient. Notice that there are no variables in this difference quotient. No x and no h. This means it doesn't matter what point you start at on the function, and it doesn't matter how far away you go. The average rate of change between those two points will always be the same. It's always going to be negative 3. Which, if you're familiar with linear functions, shouldn't be a surprise, because we know they have a constant rate of change. Here, where the function is given in slope-intercept form, we can see immediately that its slope is negative 3. So here, the difference quotient confirms what we already knew. Now, before we go, let's do one more example with a function that does not have a constant rate of change. So here we've got another graph of a red function. This function happens to be 2x squared minus 3. Now let's do what we just did. We're going to go ahead and find the difference quotient of this function. Remember, we start off with f of x plus h. That's evaluating this function at x plus h. So where we have an x, we're going to have an x plus h. Have I said x plus h enough? Let's just go ahead and write it down. 2 multiplied by x plus h squared minus 3. This is f of x plus h. Then we subtract f of x. That's just subtracting this, the function evaluated at x. So that's minus, then in parentheses, 2x squared minus 3. And again, we're going to save dividing by h for the end, just so things don't look so messy. So first, we have this coefficient of 2. Now let's expand x plus h squared. Hopefully you've got a lot of experience squaring things by now. This will give us x squared, because we'll have an x times an x. We'll also have x times h and h times x, which are the same. They'll add together for plus 2xh, and then we'll have h times h, which is h squared. So that's just squaring x plus h a little quickly. Jot it down yourself if you're not sure. Then we have minus 3. Now let's distribute this negative. We have negative 2x squared, so we'll have that here, minus 2x squared, and then negative negative 3. So that's going to be plus 3. All right, now let's distribute this 2. We have 2 times x squared, so 2x squared, then 2 multiplied by 2xh, so that'll be plus 4xh. Then we have 2 multiplied by h squared, so that's plus 2h squared. All right, we are done distributing. Then we have the minus 3, minus 2x squared, and plus 3. Just like before, there's some cancellation going on here. 2x squared, minus 2x squared. Those will be 0. We also have a minus 3 and a plus 3, so again, that's 0. And we are left with 2h squared plus 4xh. All right, now all we have to do is divide by h to get our difference quotient, but both terms in this expression have a factor of h. So first, to make things easier, let's just factor out an h. So we'll have h multiplied by 2h plus 4x. Again, that's just factoring out an h from this expression. Now, let's divide by h to find our difference quotient. So here is our numerator that we just found, and then we divide by h. And we see that things work pretty nicely here. The h's cancel out, so this is just going to be equal to the what's left here in the numerator. That's 2h plus 4x. Here, as we would expect, the difference quotient is not constant. The average rate of change between two points in this function will depend where you start, and it will depend on how far away you go. Remember that x represents the x-coordinate of our starting point, and h represents how far away we go from that starting point on the x-axis. All right, everyone, well, that should just about do it. So that is what a difference quotient is and how to find it. It is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And it tells us a function's average rate of change over some distance.
And I always like to leave you with an example when I can, so here is an example to try on your own. Try to find the difference quotient of this function, 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. I'll leave the solution in the description and be sure to let me know how it goes down in the comments. So thank you everyone very much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand what the difference quotient is and how to find it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes everything.